Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. I'm back out in the garden. And all the big growths. Seems like just in a couple of days they triple in size. It seems like they're double in size. <clears throat> I started tying up some of these big blades so they don't... It's more to keep them, not just to keep the shape of them, but um, I'm confined for space and anything that wants to start growing out sideways is just not going to make the cut. So <laughs> everybody's going to have to keep neat and tidy. Um, not a lot of space here on the shelving and down the shade house, etc. But um, also they get, it's, they're less likely to get broke off if they don't stick out, in my opinion. <clears throat> I have a bad habit of snagging on them. What that dendrobium speciosum is really liking that growl. Mm. The big lights are off. It's cooling down. Lights are going to go off in about 10 minutes here. I should have said good evening instead of good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm a little bit on the tired side still, trying to recuperate. Um, looks like our weather's going to break too. Looks like Tuesday um, we're going to go from upper 40s and low 50s at night. We're going to go to the um, upper 50s and low 60s at night, which will be nice little spike coming out. That's um, Odontal Sidium Wildcat, Golden Red Star. <clears throat> but um, that should be able to, should trigger me to put everything outside. Shouldn't be any issue with it at that, uh, that point. <clears throat> oh, a little fat little growth. <clears throat> Don't need to move everybody so quick. This camera, I mean, it's a decent camera, but it's not the most responsive when it comes to them. If, I, if you move too fast, boy, it just can't keep up. <clears throat> on Sidiums, on Sidiums, on Sidiums, doing really, really well. I can't wait to get everybody outside. As well as they're all growing inside, when I get them outside, they really ought to take off. <clears throat> that little fowl just blooms its heart out in that lava. Some pretty little spikes. <clears throat> New growth. Look really good. This is that dendrobium, the um, <laughs> trash bin dendrobium, as everybody's been calling it. <laughs> I'm really happy with that one. I love the blue one. It's just such a rich, deep color. It's on the back side. It's got a beautiful purple tinge to it. It's really a pretty bloom. It's more of a burgundy than the purple violet it looks on film. <clears throat> it's a tall one. It's got to be 40 inches tall, 38 inches tall. A little growth is just humming right along. And um, I, I notice when I try and pick up some of the rocks now, the rocks are anchored down. The roots have grabbed hold of them. They're starting to hold them down. So I'll take that as a good sign also. Big growth popping up. Let me put you on the tripod here and I'll show you what's going on. <clears throat> I was just giving a quick update. Um, I haven't been out here in a few days and sorry for all that. <clears throat> Thank you for all the comments on these two fowls. They're doing really, really good and I'm surprised how well they're doing. Oh wow, I just noticed something. <clears throat> that opened up. I didn't I didn't see that one. What a pretty one. It's a little no-name fowl, but what a pretty little bloom. <clears throat> Sorry, segue. There's always a pause for a bloom, right? <clears throat> this little fowl on the right is has a few little root tips, tiny little tips coming out on the old roots which was, I was hoping to see little red tips and little green tips starting to pop out. 
Um, the spike is still growing and still branching off and forming a bunch of buds now. It's trying to bloom. But um, the, the leaves are still hydrating somewhat. This one is actually hydrating a little bit better, I think. Um, I don't see it going in the negative direction. I see positive direction. I see new root tips popping out. Only it's, it's just a few, but it's better, better than I had a few days ago. And it is still growing. It's not absorbing that spike either. <clears throat> Remember that. Remember, it, it's, not re it's not absorbing that spike. This one's not absorbing the spike either. Oops, sorry for the bang. It, this one's not absorbing the spike either. It's trying to branch also. Um, this one, on the other hand, has, I don't know, 15 or 20 brand new little root growths I've noticed. <clears throat> and the good thing about it is it's, it's the old roots are starting to get green tips on them again. I've noticed them popping out all over the place. Um, <clears throat> that tells me the pH issue has been resolved. Um, they've been flushed really, really well. Get it back on camera if I can. They've been flushed real well, and so now they're able to absorb calcium again, and so the growth is resuming. But lots of little green tips popping up all over the place. Anyway, <clears throat> thought I'd share that. So I think this one's going to be okay. As it gets a little more root growth, it'll start absorbing more nutrients, and I'll notice something happen in the top part, in the foliage, I'm sure. Hopefully those leaves will come back and they're not... <clears throat> they don't have too much cell damage on them. <clears throat> the good thing about mobile nutrients, mobile nutrients being pulled out of those leaves and used, mobile nutrients can also be added back sometimes. It doesn't always work correct that way, but it is a possibility. So, um, Anyway, just a quick update. They are doing a little bit better. They're not getting worse. They're both heading in a positive direction. So, I had a lot of people make comments about cut those spikes off and take that energy put it back in the plant so they can grow. Uh, those spikes really only contain phosphorus and potassium. There's no energy there. And if these plants were low on phosphorus or potassium or having a deficiency in phosphorus or potassium, they would have already started absorbing these spikes. They're actually doing the opposite. They're extending the spikes out and growing. So <clears throat> I know that could be from triggering, but I'm giving them a lot of those nutrients also in, in return. They're getting some additional um, kelp and seaweed, which is a lot of potassium, additional potassium. Um, <clears throat> energy wise probably not a lot coming from the spikes more of a P and K and that's part of the plants reserves too so that's that's the main reason I don't want to cut that spike off if they want to reabsorb that spike that's fine I'll let them reabsorb that spike but I think if they're getting enough nutrition um, and they're in dire straits in the condition they're in they're not in the best of shape right now but as long as they're able to get some nutrition they won't dip into the reserves I believe and again that's just my take that's just my take on things and I'm new to orchids I remind you I'm new to orchids but um I've seen it on so many so many other videos on um, Pippin's orchids, for instance, when she shows orchids in her native country hanging on trees. I've, she has shown Phalaenopsis before that had 25, 30, or 100 spikes, and um, they're not absorbing them all. They're not reabsorbing them. I think they put them there and keep them there for a reserve, and when that time comes when they don't get enough rain and nutrients don't flow that well that year or that spring or that summer and they need that extra to be able to do whatever they want to do, they're going to pull it from a reserve. Um, I don't want to cut those off because that's part of their uh, reserve system, if that makes sense. Kind of a long-winded explanation, sorry about that. But uh, right now, as long as they're heading in a positive direction and, and um, <clears throat> they seem to be growing, I'm going to leave them be. I can always trim them later, but um, I'd rather let them absorb them on their own. I think cutting them off is, um, although it does take energy to, to bloom, yes, but I think I'm also getting the whole plant triggered by by the mixture of um, nutrients it's getting right now. They're getting calcium, they're getting magnesium, and they're getting that extra potassium. I think that's helping. So, um, Just a quick update. The room looks good. Everybody looks okay. Um, never get tired of looking at those roots and how, you know, when they're happy, boy, they're happy. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for all the kind words and comments. I really do appreciate it. Um, if our weather is going to change um, Tuesday and we're going to be able to get all the plants outside, then I can start spraying all the time and get these guys flushed out real well. They need a good three-hour rain is what they need. Flush them all out, clean the pots, clean the roots. Um, they do get flushed on a regular basis in here, but they could still use one probably. Um, also, there's just a lot of dust accumulation on the leaves with the fans and humidifiers running all the time in here. And I'm not able to spray in here, so I don't want to get salts and stuff like that accumulated. So 
when they get outside it'd be a big big different story that's probably how I feed them most of the time is spray them so I don't think they're all gonna fit in the shade house so <laughs> I, I gotta figure out what to do about that too um, <laughs> ought to be interesting anyway that'll start on Tuesday so um, I'll see you in a couple of days thank you again for all the kind words and comments and um, thanks for watching thanks for listening have a wonderful evening